Pasto's Biology, Biology 2115, Human Anatomy and Physiology 2. My email is jpasto at mgc.edu. My website is mgc.edu slash faculty slash jpasto. Starling's Law says that if you increase ventricular stretch, you increase the force of contraction. As you'll see, that will then increase stroke volume. Let's look at the molecular mechanism for muscle contraction. Now remember, muscles contain thick filaments composed of myosin proteins. The myosin molecules contain the cross bridges, and they have thin filaments. The thin filaments are mostly the protein actin plus some other proteins. And when muscles contract, this is what happens. Contraction, relaxation, elongation. Contraction, relaxation, elongation. Let's enlarge part of one of the thick filaments and part of one of the thin filaments. Let's begin by looking at skeletal muscle. Remember the sarcomere contains thin filaments and thick filaments. The thin filaments are composed of actin and some other molecules, and the thick filaments are composed of myosin. Remember also the myosin has the cross bridges which bind to binding sites on the actin. Let's enlarge one of the thick filaments and one of the thin filaments here. Now here you have the thick filament with four cross bridges. The blue dots represent the myosin binding sites on the actin. Skeletal muscle contraction can begin at various states of stretch. The thick and thin filaments can be overlapped. In this case, which I call maximum overlap, the muscle can be stretched further, as in this example, or the muscle can be less stretched, as in this example. In each case, a contraction of the muscle can begin. How many cross bridges are bound to the binding sites in the first example? Four. How many are bound if the muscle begins its contraction in the second state? Two. Likewise, if the muscle is already partially contracted, when the contraction begins, again, two binding sites are bound to cross bridges. Which one do you suppose will give the greatest strength of contraction? Well, like people pulling on a rope, the more cross bridges that are available bound to binding sites, the greater the strength of contraction. So, in skeletal muscle, Maximum strength of contraction occurs when maximum overlap of thick and thin filaments exists. If the muscle is elongated before the contraction, the strength of contraction is less. If the muscle is partially contracted before contraction, the strength of contraction is less. Now remember, this is skeletal muscle. Let's look at cardiac muscle. Now, cardiac muscle also has the same molecular design. Thin filaments, thick filaments, sarcomeres. Once again, let's enlarge a thick filament and a thin filament. At the end of systole, the thick filaments and the thin filaments are quite overlapped. This is the state after contraction. Notice in this case, one cross bridge is bound to a binding site. Now, of course, remember, in the sarcomere, there are hundreds, thousands of cross bridges. Now, as the heart begins to fill, the thick and thin filaments begin to slide apart. So, in this view, some filling has taken place, some stretching of the muscular wall of the heart. If the heart begins a contraction at this state, let's say a strength of two cross bridges worth. If, on the other hand, the heart begins to fill more, stretching the walls a little more, 
sliding the thick and thin filaments a little further apart. Now if the contraction begins, because of more overlap, we would have, in this example, three cross bridges worth of strength. Now eventually the heart fills to its maximum. Now we're talking about a healthy heart, a normal healthy heart. If it fills to its maximum and now begins to contract, how many cross bridges worth of strength in this example is provided? Four cross bridges worth. So you see, the more the heart stretches and fills, the greater the overlap and the greater the strength of the next contraction. This is Starling's Law. Now don't be confused by a diseased, oversized heart. If the heart is diseased and becomes over-enlarged, then the filaments stretch like the skeletal muscle example, beyond maximum overlap, and the heart becomes weak. Here's the thick filament. And here's the thin filament. So when the muscle contracts, this is what happens. Bind, bend, slide, relax, elongate. Cardiac muscle is a little different from skeletal muscle because in the healthy heart it does not expand beyond maximum overlap. Let's look at the thick and thin filaments in cardiac muscle. Notice that this thick filament has seven cross bridges and the thin filament has seven myosin binding sites illustrated by the indentions. The state you see on the screen we'll call maximum overlap. That is, all seven cross bridges are bound with binding sites. Now let's assume when the cross bridges bind and bend, each one generates a cross bridge worth of force. So in this case, if contraction begins, seven cross bridges worth of force would be generated. Now during systole, the thick and thin filaments slide. Then during diastole, blood begins to enter the heart. And as blood enters the heart, the walls expand and the filaments slide in this direction. Now let's assume partial filling took place such that four cross bridges are bound to the thin filament. We could say the next systole generates four cross bridges worth of energy. Now, diastole begins again, the heart begins to fill, but this time more blood flows into the heart. Now let's say this is the state at the end of diastole. Notice that five cross bridges have bound. The next systole, the next contraction, generates force, but greater force than before because it was five cross bridges worth of force. Again, the heart fills with blood, the thick and thin filaments slide in this direction, and now all seven cross bridges have bound, maximum overlap occurs, and maximum force of contraction is generated. In this case, we'll say seven cross bridges worth of force. So, you see, the greater the stretch, the greater the force of contraction. This is Starling's Law.